From our world-class Australian campus, our passionate lecturers are able to educate trials riders from all over the world. Are you ready to learn? Welcome to the University of Trials. We're about to start the fourth class for this semester, and by now you should be realising that your skills are improving and your times are starting to drop. One of the things I've really enjoyed about engaging with students during the semester is hearing the stories about how you are improving. So please leave me some comments and let me know how the university has helped you. As always, we've got quite a lot to cover this class, so let's get to it. If you've been playing Trials for a while, I'm sure this is something you're used to seeing. But what I wanted to discuss today was some techniques for minimising your faults and to actually show you how important it is to get the number of faults down before you ever worry about how long it takes you to get through a track. Firstly, let's have a look at the impact that the number of faults can have on your leaderboard positioning. Now I'm going to go into a track here, Inferno 3. I'm going to scroll through all of these guys who play this game way too much with zero faults and have a look at someone a little lower down the list, like this inexperienced rider for example. Or maybe we'll go to another couple of guys that I know. Let's focus on Alexander Owl and Ultimate Games. What you can see here is that Alexander Owl has seven faults and a minute 33. Ultimate Games, on the other hand, has 13 faults and a minute 32. Ultimate Games was faster, but until he can get his faults down, it doesn't matter. What this therefore suggests is that every time you press that red B button, you're actually going to be going further down the leaderboard, so you've got to make every possible effort to not fault and to be able to recover from any situation. Now for the purposes of this lesson, I'm not going to get into all of the specifics about the techniques that you can use. What I wanted to show you is little tricks like this, rocking backwards and forwards to get yourself off a little ledge, being able to accelerate a bit to move yourself off somewhere where you're stuck, uh, you know, rocking back and forth on the bike here uh, to be able to get your wheel out of a tricky situation. The key is to get through a track with the least amount of faults possible. The scoring clearly shows that that's beneficial. What I'm trying to encourage you to do is be as creative as you can and only as an absolute last resort, hit the B button and accept the fault. Next, I want to talk about the ramp hop. This is a type of obstacle where we have a ramp leading into a vertical ledge. Now I believe this has quite a specific technique and I'm hoping to share this with you here. I want to make it very clear that this is very different to the type of technique I'm showing you here where we're actually doing a bunny hop at the top of a ramp. The key thing that sets this obstacle apart is the ramp leading into a vertical ledge and it's very important to spot them because you'll approach them all in very much the same way. So now let's talk about the technique. What you want to do is start from a seated position and start accelerating at the base of the ramp here. What happens is that your front wheel will actually lift up as a result of the acceleration and the fact that your body weight is toward the rear of the bike. Then what you do is lean forward and this will allow your momentum to carry you over the top of the ramp rather than having to jump. The key thing to remember is to stop accelerating as you get close to the top of the ledge. If you don't, you run the risk of your rear wheel gaining grip on the top of the ledge, accelerating and actually flipping you backwards. Now it's just a matter of continuing to lean forward and your body weight and momentum will get you over the edge. Now let's take another look at this without the brakes and see how it's done. But here's my favourite part. Now we can actually start using that technique on a number of other extreme tracks that you may not have even thought about. Here's an example on the wreck, and even though that was quite a short lead up to the jump, the exact same technique applied. Another example we've got here on Fishy Business, same technique, even though there was a gap in that ramp, the same technique will work perfectly. And now that we know that this technique works even when there's a gap in the ramp, I want you to look at this obstacle here. Now this is pretty tricky, but if you just use a little bit of imagination, you'll start to see that it's the exact same obstacle. Now, using the exact same technique, when your body weight gets to the top of the ramp you lean forward, you clear the jump quite easily. It may not look like it, but it is the same jump. And now that you know this, you'll be completing this with a lot more consistency. Now that we're halfway through the first semester, I thought it was appropriate that we take a little bit of time just to start thinking about the overall philosophy and the way you should be approaching a track. We've been going through a number of lessons teaching you individual techniques, and what I want you to teach you now is about how to make a particular track easy. Now Dark City Run is not an easy track by any stretch of the imagination, but with a few of the techniques that we've taught you, we can actually make this track quite simple. 
The key is to break down each obstacle and think about it as it applies to previous lessons that we've provided. Now if I look at this obstacle right here, I'm going to go back to lesson 3 and have a think about the uphill transitions lesson that we talked about. What we should be doing is sitting down on the bike, lifting the front wheel up and then accelerating gently up the slope. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. The second thing now, I'm going to look at this and think, well, that's a bunny hop from lesson 1. So I'm going to start taking this as a bunny hop and looking across the other side to realize that there's also a landing on an uphill slope, which was also covered in lesson 3. And finally, you're going to recognize this obstacle. That's a ramp hop, and we've just gone over that tutorial. As I just explained, sit back on the bike, accelerate, lifting the front wheel up, and then allowing your body weight to carry you over. Now I'm not going to go through the entire track today. I know there's a couple of obstacles ahead of this that I'm sure you're going to want help with, but for the moment, let's save them for a future lesson. What I'm trying to encourage you to do is think about each checkpoint as a standalone obstacle and tackle them individually. Find the easiest way you can get across them, find a consistent way to get across them, and if you've got to, try different alternatives like I'm showing you here to get across the obstacles in the most reliable way possible. The reason that I often suggest that new players to the series don't watch top replays is because a lot of the time it masks all of the individual techniques that are being used. What you can see here is a very sort of smooth and fluid transition from one obstacle to the next, but when you're just starting out, that's not the best way to ride. What you should be doing is stopping in between each checkpoint and just understanding what's happening in between the checkpoints instead of trying to fluidly transition between both of them. Using that strategy will definitely help you improve. Sorry class, but it looks like it's that time again. Here at the University of Trials, we're always looking for new students, so make sure you tell everybody you know to check out these classes. Also, let me know in the comments if there's any other obstacles that we haven't covered or any techniques that you've seen that we haven't gone into yet, and I'll make sure to include it in future lessons. Be sure to check out all of the previous University of Trials and other Red Links videos, and make sure you subscribe because in the next class, we're going to have some special footage from my trip to E3.